Hey guys, today I'm going to be sharing with you my July fangirl favorites for 2019. So, quick disclaimer, as always, before I start these end of month videos, uh, anything that I'm about to talk about in this particular video, I'm not going to have any sort of spoilers, so continue to watch freely as you will. Uh, so yeah, I guess let's get, let's get going. Uh, July. July. Uh, not too much going on for me this month, but I did finally get around to some movies, you guys. Going to movies has been pretty slow going. Uh, but yeah, before I do get into some of my favorite movies and television and whatnot uh, that I enjoyed this month, first off, my my lovely shirt. <laughs> Let me stand up so you can see it. Uh, it says Queen of the North. Um, this is a, a Sansa Stark shirt from Game of Thrones. I purchased this shirt on the HBO store. Uh, I gotta support my girl Sansa Stark. She is, I think, literally my favorite character on the show. Uh, yeah, Game of Thrones, it's been over for a couple months, but I'm still on a Game of Thrones high, <laughs> you guys. Um, and I think I'm probably the only one. Uh, but yeah, I uh, had to show my love for Sansa Stark with this Queen of the North shirt. Uh, I really like this shirt. It's a bit kind of big on me. Um, I wasn't, because I pre-ordered the shirt for starters, and I was like, I'm not sure what size to get, and I think I got a size too big for me. I think I could have gone down a size, because, yeah, the shirt, it's a little big, like, especially up here through the neck, and, like, and I keep kind of dragging over, and then you can see, like, my, my bra strap. <laughs> so, yeah, I probably could have gone down a size, but either way, I still like the shirt. It's, it's still very, very comfy, and I love it. So yeah, let's get going with um, some movies and television, starting with some movies. Because like, 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 like I've been saying for the past several months, I feel like it's been slow going for movies that I've not really got around to anything. But I finally got around to a couple movies this month. Uh, first up, I finally saw uh, Dark Phoenix, you guys. I finally saw freaking Dark Phoenix. Uh, I personally love the X-Men movies. I know a lot of people... It, it's kind of been a, a slow down downward slide for people with their love of the X-Men movies, but I've still been enjoying them for what they are. Um, I don't think they, they're, they've not been as good as like some of the earlier movies, I suppose. Um, but I still enjoyed Dark Phoenix for what it was. Um, I, th I, th I think it probably needed to be a little bit longer because it, it's like there was a lot going on with the plot and with the characters and it's like yeah you needed to stretch us out a tiny bit more to, to give things a natural progression you know what I mean um but but yeah I, I do because Dark Phoenix if you don't know what Dark Phoenix is about it it's kind of the 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 origin story I suppose of how the character of Jean Grey becomes the Phoenix character and that's a pretty big story arc in the X-Men comics apparently and a lot of people love that that comic line story and yeah even the the animated series I think X-Men the animated series that aired back in the early 90s a lot of people I know really loved the Dark Phoenix story arc even in that cartoon <laughs> Uh, so yeah, the Dark Phoenix story arc is a pretty big deal in the X-Men comics and X-Men lore and a lot of people were kind of dreading this movie, but me personally, I liked it. I really liked the character of of Jean Grey and yeah, in this movie her being played um, as, as a younger version of the character and it being played by Sophie Turner who y'all y'all already know I'm wearing I'm wearing a Game of Thrones shirt that's dedicated to, to Sansa Stark, also played by Sophie Turner. So of course, I love Sophie Turner for some reason. I think, but yeah, I liked Dark Phoenix. It was enjoyable for what it was. I needed more Magneto, you guys. I am a straight up Michael Fassbender Magneto fangirl. <laughs> And I was like, where the hell is my Magneto? I need a Magneto. I love him. Ah, uh, seriously. Michael Fassbender is a gorgeous man to look at. Uh, plus, I also love James McAvoy. I've had a huge crush on James McAvoy since he was in The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, you guys. So I, I needed kind of a bit more of James McAvoy as well. I, I, feel like, I feel like a lot of the characters in the movie just didn't get the screen time they needed. You know, it was. It just felt like a very rushed, rapid movie trying to get through this big story arc that needed a bit more time to progress, I suppose. Either way, like I keep saying, I personally like the movie. 
it was it was fine. Probably not my favorite X Men movie, but I still liked it. Uh, you know, speaking of X Men movies, do you guys enjoy the X Men movies, the, the X Men universe, the X Men franchise? What are your favorite ones? If you do like it, um, the very first X Men, you know, released back in what? What was that? Nineteen ninety nine. Good lord. I'm old. Uh, uh, that's that's still one of my favorites. Uh, I enjoy it to this day, as cheesy it is as it is sometimes. Um, I I really enjoyed kind of the X Men reboot of the franchise, starting with um, uh, first uh, with X Men First Class, which was which was what started like with Mac Michael Fassbender and James McAvoy. Yeah, I really loved that movie, and yeah, I really liked Days of Future Past and whatnot. And yeah, Logan, obviously, Logan being Hugh Jackman's final movie is, is Wolverine. I, I freaking loved Logan. So yeah, there's there's hits and misses within the, the, the X-Men franchise, but at the end of the day, I still ultimately enjoy them all. And I'm very curious, you know, because Dark Phoenix is supposed to kind of be the last X-Men movie because now Marvel slash Disney... Um, they they have the franchise to the X-Men now, so I'm kind of curious if if uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, if now the X-Men are going to be part of, like, the world. They're going to be part of the Avengers now, which is going to be kind of strange and weird. I don't know how I feel about that. I kind of like the X-Men as their own separate thing away from the Avengers, you know? So I don't know. I'm curious what Disney's going to do now that they have the rights to the X-Men. It's like, I'm not ready for another reboot. You know, I, I, it's like, just chill, you know, just chill with the X-Men. We don't need no more movies. Give it, you know, give it a little while. Give it a decade <laughs> and then revisit them. You know, give it some time. Um, but yeah, Dark Phoenix was, was good. I really liked it personally. Uh, did you guys see Dark Phoenix? Just let me know your thoughts down below. Also, finally got around to the latest Toy Story movie, Toy Story 4, which I think is the final one, you guys. They almost made it seem like a big deal that... Toy Story 3 was going to be the last one, but then it's like, wait, nope, we got one more to tell, so surely Toy Story 4 is going to be the last one, you guys, surely, because it felt like a definitive conclusion to the story, to, to, to the Toy Story franchise. Um, yeah, I've loved the Toy Story movies, you know, I've loved them since I was a little girl and everything, because yeah, that first one was released back in like the early 90s. Um, yeah, this movie heavily follows kind of Woody's, Woody's crisis, if you will, uh, him trying to learn to let go and whatnot, and yeah, the reintroduction of Bo Peep, you guys, because Bo Peep was in the first two movies, and then she kind of just mysteriously vanished, and it's like, well, where did Bo Peep go? So I love the reintroduction of Bo Peep in this movie, that she's not been forgotten, that there's a very good explanation about where she's been and how she kind of got into the circumstance that she did. Um, yeah, the new character of Forky, which is so hilarious and so adorable, but very sweet and heartwarming once you kind of get the context of how he's kind of integrated into the movie. And yeah, Toy Story 4, I, I had my concerns because it's like, we don't need this movie. Why is it being made? We don't need it. The trailers, I seriously was not even enjoying the trailers, to be honest. Um, it just felt like it was just fluff and filler. Uh, but no, Toy Story 4 is is very much a needed movie. I feel like it's, it's not an unnecessary movie. Um, it definitely wraps up everything. It wraps up some loose ends. It wraps up a lot of the characters and the relationships. Relationships between toys, I suppose. And it is. I think it's a must. If you love the Toy Story franchise, this final movie is definitely a must. I think it's well worth your time and it's going to give you all sorts of feels. <laughs> as far as another movie goes, also saw Spider-Man, you guys. Spider-Man Far From Home, the latest Marvel Cinematic movie. Uh, Tom Holland as Spider-Man. Um, another great Spider-Man movie, you guys, especially here with the, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Spider-Man, anyway. Uh, I loved Spider-Man Spider Far From Home. Um, very interesting plot, very interesting things going on. It's very difficult to talk about this Spider-Man movie because if you've not seen Avengers Endgame, you really can't talk about this movie. You know, you really can't talk about it. You have, you literally do have to have seen Avengers Endgame. It is a must. Um, so yeah, if you're someone 
you're like, oh, I just love, I just love Spider-Man as a character. I don't need to see the other movies. The thing is, I think you really do need to see Endgame because there's a lot of things that are kind of happening in this movie that won't make sense to you, you know. And I think even Captain Marvel because um, there's even a um, a, a end credit scene at the end of, the, of at the end of Spider-Man. There's an end credit scene that. If you've not even seen Captain Marvel, you're not going to understand what has happened. Because I think the end credit scene is kind of setting up some future things that are going to be happening within this next phase of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, if you will. Um, so, so yeah, how to, how to talk about Spider-Man? Because, it's, like I said, it's very difficult if you've not seen Endgame. Like I said, I can't give away spoilers. Um, but yeah, I, I, liked it. I, I liked Spider-Man quite a lot. Great, great plot line. Um, I, I loved revisiting all the characters that were set up in Homecoming. Um, Tom Holland is just killing it as Spider-Man. You guys, I really love his portrayal of Spider-Man. Like, this is how Spider-Man should be portrayed, in my opinion. Um, and then you have uh, Jake Gyllenhaal, who is playing the character of Mysterio. Mysterio, the, the way Mysterio is done in this movie, it is absolutely freaking brilliant. Yeah, guys, and that's all I'm going to say about the character of Mysterio. Um, it is absolutely done brilliantly and cleverly and done in such a way that it's kind of believable and it makes sense and it and there's a lot of stuff in regards to the Mysterio character that kind of harkens back uh, mostly a lot to the Iron Man movies. It's also kind of a big deal that you've probably seen all the Iron Man movies prior to even going into this Spider-Man movie. Um, so, 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 yeah, I, I loved everything about Far From Home, just very well done, a, a, a fun, a fun action movie, uh, I am, I'm just a fan of all the Marvel movies, what can I say? As far as some other movies I got around to, let's travel to Netflix now, I finally watched a few Netflix movies, um, I finally got around to Ex Machina. Yeah, guys, I've heard so many amazing things about Ex Machina in the past, and I've been anxious to sit and watch it. Um, if you don't know what Ex Machina is about, it stars Oscar Isaac and uh, Donald Gleason, and it takes place in a contemporary setting, and it follows these um, two guys. Um, uh, Oscar Isaac is like a, he's like a is he like a billionaire? I guess he's like a billionaire possibly, and, but he's very eccentric and he's very smart and intelligent and he he's creating artificial intelligence, like lifelike, believable artificial intelligence. And that's kind of where Donald Gleason comes in. He's there to kind of be a guinea pig almost and he's there to to go through trial phases with this artificial intelligence to see how believable the artificial intelligence is and if it can fool the human eye. And then, yeah, playing the artificial intelligence is Alicia Vikander, um, kind of one of her first movie roles where she, one of her first movie roles where she first got recognized, you know, she kind of became a household name, I feel like. Um, and, yeah, that's kind of all, mech, that's all Ex Machina is about, essentially. It's just three characters. It's, it's, it's Alicia Vikander and Oscar Isaac and Donald Gleason. It's just their three characters interacting and it's a very intelligent, clever movie. Um, it's all about just dialogue. You know, it's that type of movie. Movie. It is straight out dialogue. It, it's not about the action or anything. Um, it's a movie that gets you thinking. It, it gets. It provokes like deep thoughts and uh, to to get you thinking it more intelligently and asking philosophical, philosophical questions and debates and whatnot. Um, it's like that type of movie, you know? But it's not boring by any means. It's it's very thrilling and exciting in its own way once you watch it and once things kind of start happening and getting put into place. So, so yeah, I'm so glad I finally got around to Ex Machina. It did not disappoint me. I kind of see now what all the hype is about, why people love it. Um, so yeah, if you've not seen Ex Machina, if you have a Netflix account, it's on Netflix. Go watch it. it it's so so well done. I think I loved it. And then the final movie I watched on Netflix was uh, The Nutcracker, which came out in December of 2018, correct? So a recent movie put out by Disney. The Nutcracker being based off of like the classic story, and which was then turned into um, like the play and whatnot. 
um the nutcracker good good lord you guys i don't know what to say about the nutcracker uh i knew that it had a lot of bad reviews prior to watching it but i still wanted to see it i was like i have a netflix account why not just go ahead and watch it it's fine um the nutcracker it, it was okay um, it, the, the, the bad thing about the Nutcracker is like it has a really great cast. It has Kira Knightley for crying out loud and Helen Mirren. But the I think the the actual plot itself and I think the writing don't really give enough justice <laughs> to the story. I don't know. So I don't know if I could even sit here and recommend the Nutcracker. I mean, you either want to see it or you don't. It just depends on your mood. If you love Kira Knightley, watch it for Kira Knightley, I suppose. Uh, I, the Nutcracker, it wasn't terrible. You know, it wasn't like god awful terrible. It was still watchable for what it was. Uh, um, I liked it okay. I don't know if I would ever sit and watch it again. <laughs> to be honest, watching it the one time was good for me. I, I just liked seeing Kira Knightley and Helen Mirren and uh, yeah, Matthew McFadden is in it. I kind of got the biggest kick out of Kira Knightley and Matthew McFadden being in the movie together because if you're a Pride and Prejudice fan, <laughs> uh, yeah, what what year was that one made? 2005? I want to say that 2005 remake of Pride and Prejudice because that had Matthew McFadden as Mr. Darcy and Keira Knightley as Elizabeth Bennett. I got the biggest kick watching The Nutcracker because I kept hoping like, oh, maybe they'll cross paths in this movie. <laughs> uh, but yeah, a lot of The Nutcracker was just very pre predictable. Uh, me and my sister were watching The Nutcracker together. It kind of reached a point in the movie. We predicted what kind of the big twist was going to be, and yeah, sure enough, we got it correct. Um, so yeah, you guys, have you seen The Nutcracker? Did you like it or hate it? Let me know, because yeah, I, I have mixed feelings about it, but at the end of the day, it was okay. <laughs> okay, so that's enough with movies. I've been talking here for a very freaking long time about movies. Uh, let's move on to a few television shows that I got around to, because like, like I said, I, I love television. I watch a lot of it. Um, um, I did finally get around to The Haunting of Hill House, you guys. Finally. Um, I've heard a lot of good things about The Haunting of Hill, Hill House, which is a Netflix series. I'm not going to sit here and talk a lot about The Haunting of Hill House because I'm actually going to be doing a, a longer in-depth review and discussion about it, um, So, which should be going up sometime in August. So yeah, if you watch The Haunting of Hill House, I'm going to have that discussion up in August at some point, so stay tuned for that because yeah, it's I had a lot to say about it because I freaking loved The Haunting of Hill House, you guys. It was mind blowing. I loved it. I'll leave you with that. Uh, and besides The Haunting of Hill House, I also finally got around to Medici. Yeah, guys, y'all know I love me a good historical fiction period drama. Um, yeah, Medici. Um, so far, two seasons of it are out. A third is on the way. This is also a Netflix show, but I think originally put out by like the BBC or something, some, somewhere in the UK, one of the networks in the UK. Um, yeah, following the very famous Medici family who were like an Italian Renaissance family known for kind of a lot of craziness in the family and uh, these rumors of corruption and, and murder and whatnot. Um, yeah, season one of the Medici uh, show. Well, the season one is called Medici Masters of Florence. They all have a different title. Season one's uh, Medici Master Masters of Florence, and then season two is Medici uh, the Magnificent. But yeah, season one of Medici stars um, Richard Madden as um, uh, Cosimo Medici, who's kind of the founder of the Medici family. He starts up the Medici Bank and whatnot. Yeah, that's another thing you need to know about the Medici that I just neglected. They're bankers. They, they were a very big banking family. And yeah, I love Richard Madden in season one. Um, and then yeah, season two kind of moves up a couple decades and season two stars uh, Daniel Sharman as uh, Lorenzo de' Medici who becomes the Magnificent. That's kind of his moniker. And yeah, Sean Bean is also in season two. I love that. Um, I did. I highly enjoyed both seasons of Medici, you guys. Um, the show is a little bit slow initially. I think it's kind of slow both seasons, but it's like each season, by the time you get to the end, because there are only eight episodes a season, but by the time you get to the ending point of every season, it's like those last couple episodes are like, wow, this is amazing. I loved it. Especially season two. Ooh, those final two episodes of season two were just mind-blowing, you guys, and it's, it's well worth it. 
to watch this show. Um, but yeah, if you if you like historical fiction, um, if you like the Medici family, if you like other shows like the Tudors or the Borgias, or yeah, even like the White Queen and the White Princess and the Spanish Princess, those shows, any combination of those shows, if you like those shows, I think you're definitely going to love Medici if that's your sort of thing. Um, I definitely recommend it. And then yeah, as far as other television, just other basic television, yeah, I've been watching The 100, which has been very good. Um, yeah, I've been watching Fear the Walking Dead, which has been kind of strange this season, but still pretty okay. Um, yeah, I watch a lot. Yeah, guys, there's a lot of just random things I watch. Oh, Poldark. I'm almost forgetting about Poldark. I've been watching Poldark. Poldark has not officially aired here in the U.S. just yet, so I'm a very impatient American. I say this all the time when I'm watching British television. I'm a very impatient American when it comes to British television. So I've been watching Poldark, even though it hasn't aired yet here in the U.S., you guys. And yeah, this is the final season of Poldark. I'm very upset and traumatized about that. I don't know what I'm going to do with myself when Poldark ends. <laughs> but yeah, I've been loving Poldark so far. And yeah, I mean, that's that's kind of been it for me this month. Yeah, guys. I don't. I don't think I have any. I don't think I have anything else to say. Just mostly a lot of movies and television. That's how I like to spend my time. <laughs> so, you guys, that is it for this month's fangirl favorites. In the comments below, what things have you guys enjoyed in the month of July? It can be movies, television, um, video games, music, whatever. Whatever floats your boat. Just share with me down below, so maybe I can go check those things out. So, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you like this video, you may like these other videos. Bye, guys.